Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 205th Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I put on to YouTube. As most of you know, I usually only put a battle on Saturday morning, but uh, as I got home from work and the computer was free, I thought I'll put a Friday um, battle on for you to watch. Uh, the team I'm in today consists of Brotherhood member Axilius, who has bought the Rome SBQR faction. And then we have... Brotherhood member JGP, who has also bought the Rome SBQR faction. And then myself, Spartan Commander, who has bought the Greek Cities faction. Uh, unusual for me to bring, to bring the uh, Greek Cities faction these days, but the reason for that is you'll see it in a minute. As you can see, I've got nine Cretan archers, and I think I've got 11 Spartan units. There, so nine Cretan archers and eleven Spartan units. Now, the reason I've bought this army is because of who we're facing. Now, we're facing Egypt. Now, usually at thirty-one k, an Egypt army is what I call a skirmish army. Maybe twelve, thirteen Pharaoh archers, a couple of infantry units, uh, usually a couple of archer chariot units, and four usually heavy, um, fully upgraded. Uh, heavy chariots there and also we're facing Germania so that's another reason why I bought the Spartans so that um, my pikes can face the uh, the berserkers as a lot of you will know berserkers die quite quickly if they fight against pikes so that's why I bought this Greek city's army it's got kind of a dual purpose should be a great battle for you to watch hope you enjoy it and here is the other team we have RTW player USSR Cat. A lot of you know him. He's been playing RTW for a long time. And he's bought the Seleucid faction. Let's have a look at his army here. And if you see, he's got his Silver Shield Pikeman. And if you notice, they've got eight upgrades on. So that is two experienced stripes, gold attack, and gold defense. And I think he's got something like eight or nine of those pike units so they'll be quite formidable to fight also because his pike units are very susceptible to archer damage I noticed that he's bought I think it's four archer units as well to uh, to defend against um, archer fire onto his units and then of course we have the infamous cataphract uh, cavalry um, of course these uh, these guys we call the tanks of the ancient world simply because of the armor that they've got um, their armor from head to toe and if used correctly these guys can be battle winning troops there you go can you see the armor from head to toe really good specifications um, a great charge and as I said earlier they can be battle winning troops and I see he's got six units of those so that's a pretty, a pretty solid Seleucid army there and then our, the next teammate is Brotherhood member Uther, who has bought the Germania faction. Now, there's the Germania general. If you notice, that general is fully upgraded. But if you notice where the general stood in the dark area of the map, which means that signifies long grass. So the rest of the Germania army, uh, the rest of the Germania cavalry, are hidden in that long grass there. And then we're going to have a look at his uh, Germania infantry there. If you notice, he's got the um, you got the Night Raiders there. Now these infantry are tough in their own right, but they've also got a fear factor. They lower the morale of uh, nearby enemy troops. So, um, as I say, these guys are a pretty formidable infantry um, themselves there, and especially with that uh, that fear factor. And then he's got his effective against armor chosen axemen. Now these guys used properly can cut swathes through Roman ranks with those effective against armor axes. Um, so those guys are uh, pretty tough once again they're kind of like the backbone of the uh, of the Germania infantry there and then we come on to the infamous berserkers um, now those berserkers carry effective against armor maces and are based on real historic characters uh, berserkers were people that um, that other people tended to avoid both in and out of battle some of them used to take uh, a cocktail of drugs some of them used to get drunk and some of them had mental health problems and in battle they literally went berserk there were tales um, saying that some berserkers used to run around the battlefield naked covered in blood and gore after a battle howling like banshees and this game uh, gives these berserkers extremely good specifications uh, they got hit points two hit points as well and um, if you notice the size of them in compared to ordinary infantry, you can see how big they are um, in this game. So, um, so these guys used properly can be battle-changing troops. 
and I think he's got three, yeah, he's got the maximum um, in 31k rules of three Berserker units there. So that looks a pretty solid Germania army there to me, and could do a lot of damage to uh, to our, my Roman allies there. Then the third ally is, if you notice, there's five asterisks or five stars there, and that is RTW player Scorpion King SR, and he has bought the Egyptian army there, Egyptian faction. If you notice, he's got the Pharaoh archers. I think these archers, fat pound for pound, are probably the best archers in the game. They're so tough, if they run out of arrows, you can actually use them as light infantry. And I see he's got three, what's it, three, four five six seven he's got something like about eight units of those um archers i've seen him bring more than that in the past but that's how many he's got there now we move on to the pharaoh guards uh these are the elite uh troops of the egyptian uh faction there and i see he's also got the uh the heavy chariots now one good thing about these chariots is they got good specifications but they don't run amok do you remember we've seen in other battle videos where chariots run amok and they become a menace to both friends and foe alike where well, these are just like any other unit if they get routed they just leave the battlefield they don't run amok so um they're pretty good chariots to have and i think he's got something like about five of those heavy chariots if you notice the um the scythes on the wheels there as well and there uh, yeah so i think he's got five of those heavy uh, heavy chariots there and i think he's got one unit of chariot archers there now these chariot archers can form canterbury circles um, and are very difficult to kill once they get into those canterbury circles and can cause a lot of casualties as we might see later so there's the enemy team there this should be a cracking game for you to watch with a lot of different factions in Okay, at this very early stage of the battle, you can see that Scorpion King SR is bringing his Egyptian army over to the attack um, tactic move there. Now there's that um, Archer Chariot unit I was talking to you about earlier. And if you notice, Scorpion King's put it into that um, Canterbury Circle uh, formation there. Whereas it goes round, it literally fires like almost like machine gun bullets. Um, obviously arrows into the enemy um, that they're actually targeting there. Now if you look... Remember that uh, that archer unit there is an 81-man archer unit, and look at the casualties it's suffered already. And if you notice that uh, the chariot archers are 54-man unit, unit, and they haven't sent, suffered a single casualty uh, from there, and they've caused a heck of a lot of casualties to that one unit there. Now he's down to 50 men, already, so he's lost 31 men already. That um, archer unit, and that uh, that chariot archer unit has lost uh, not one single uh, man from that unit yet. So that just goes to show how tough those um, those chariot archers are and how um, effective they are in that Canterbury circle. And you could bring loads of archers over there and shoot loads of... Uh, you could bring loads of foot archers over there and fire loads and loads of arrows at that uh, Canterbury circle and you would hardly cause any casualties at all. And as I say, as it turns around, it's firing arrows out at, at, the, at its target all the time as it's going round and round. And look at that unit now, down to 34 men from 80 just from that one chariot archer unit there go around in canterbury circle well if you notice uther here has bought his fully upgraded uh, german general out uh, with a view to try and kill a few archers there but my spqr allies were pretty fast there to react with their own cavalry there and some infantry to drive him off there but if you notice the scorpion king sr has bought some of his egyptian pharaoh archers over to this flank as well to add more weight to the uh, the archer firepower there seems to be uh, quite an archer battle going on at the moment here uh, and of course as i said before the seleucid um pikemen there are very susceptible to archer fire so i think um from the from the enemy's uh, team's point of view um trying to kill as many of our archers as they can is the best thing to do here right you see my spqr ally there axilius is bringing one of his cavalry units out here uh, with a view to try and kill as many of the enemy archers as he can i thought the enemy might have sent out some cavalry to counter him by now with the uh, the casualties that he's causing um, I think the Germania cavalry are still hidden in the long grass at this time, or I'm sure Uther would have uh, sent some uh, cavalry over there to um, to deal with my uh, my allies' cavalry, and it there has caused a bit of a nuisance there against uh, their archers. I see there's a heck of a lot of archers in this game. Okay, there's um. Uther's uh, cavalry. Let's pause the game for a second. My guess is that that's probably Gothic cavalry. 
Yeah, Gothic Cavalry, very underestimated cavalry, Gothic Cavalry. Their specifications are very good. And uh, I think Uther hiding them in the long grass was a nice tactical move there. Those cavalry will be fresh. He was probably hoping to hold them in the long grass a bit longer, but seeing the danger to the archers from um, from the SBQR cavalry, he probably decided to bring his uh, Germania cavalry out there to help a little bit. So there's a general overview. As I say, it's, it's really turning into uh, quite an archer battle here at the beginning. Can you see that Seleucid heavy uh, cavalry unit coming over there to try and take out these uh, these archers? My guess is that the SBQR cavalry will be brought out to counter them. Yep, and there you go. You can see some SBQR unit uh, cavalry there brought out to counter those uh, Seleucid uh, cavalry. Of course, me taking Greek cities has put my uh, my team at a big cavalry disadvantage at this stage. So, um, my allies are doing very well in conserving their cavalry and just kind of doing surgical strikes on uh, archer units. Um, just making sure they don't get into full cavalry fights where they would probably be uh, outnumbered there. If you notice, I brought several of my Cretan archers forward there to help with the archer battle on this right flank. But I want to keep some Cretan archers back because I notice there's a several Pharaoh um, archer units that haven't been brought into the battle yet. So I want to keep uh, some fresh uh, Cretan archers there ready to um, to deal with them. Right, can you see over here, JGP's cavalry, a cavalry unit of JGP's has been decimated by archer fire. He's probably been concentrating so much on other parts of the battle that he's forgot this cavalry unit and look at the dead. Those cavalry haven't killed a single enemy and yet it's been depleted by more than half. Um, but mind you, every single one of us watching this would have been in that position sometime where we're concentrating on one part of the battlefield and you might not notice what's happening to uh, a unit of yours on the other side of the battlefield. So we've all done it, but that's, uh, that's a heck of a lot of cavalry to use, bearing in mind we all, were already at a cavalry disadvantage there. As you can see, um, Scorpion King SR has moved several of his um, Pharaoh Archer units uh, more into the fray. And I see um, Axilius is moving some of his SBQR infantry forward there towards the Seleucid uh, pikemen. But of course he will be aware that the Germania infantry has stood just behind those pikemen. And he'll be very aware that those berserker units with the Axemen and those Night Raiders plus a cavalry charge could possibly rout his, all, his whole army. So... Um, he will be very aware of that. He's probably moved forward trying to draw the enemy forward towards his own infantry. There's a general overview of exactly what's happening so far. As you can notice now, I'm putting a lot of my Cretan archers into the fray. I'm leaving my, um, I think I'm leaving my Greek cities uh, army at the back there because I don't want to play my hand too soon. Because what I'm hoping for is to be close enough to my ally for when Germania attacks. And when those berserkers are activated, I want to have my pikemen fresh and uh, ready to just jump straight into the breach there. Remember, that's one of the main reasons I've bought my uh, my Greek cities army is to actually repel and kill those berserker units when they attack. So, um, but I don't want to play my hand. I don't want to be too close to the front line where um, they can see exactly what I'm doing. As you can see, there's some pharaoh archers here with their long distance uh, arrows. As I said earlier, I've moved some of my. Um, well, most of my Macedon uh, archers now are moved forward uh, to engage um, what I'm aiming for mostly. I am not really want to waste my archers on the cheap uh, Seleucid um, short-range archers. What I really want to do is concentrate on the Pharaoh archers. If I can take them out, then that will leave my archers available to target Germania or Seleucid or the Egyptian um, units there because they're all susceptible to archer fire. So that's what I'd like to do there. Some some of my uh, Cretan archers there firing into um, into those uh, those Pharaoh archers there on our left flank. If you notice that Scorpion King got his um, Egyptian pikemen ready to charge in there uh, when he's ready. And I've noticed that the Germania general Uther is bringing his Germania army his infantry slowly round to. Um, 
to getting close to my uh, my allies' Roman uh, infantry. There, here's another close up of my uh, my Cretan archers firing into the uh, the Pharaoh archers. There, as I said, I'm hoping that those um, Cretan archers um, can kind of neutralise the Pharaoh archers a little bit. There, I was expecting more Pharaoh archers than what Scorpion King has bought. So. Um, I just hope that they're uh, they're doing a job that uh, I want them to. Right, let's just pause the game for a second to take stock of exactly what's happening. As you can see, the Germania and Seleucid army here uh, are in front of Exilius's army, or the the Germania cavalry are. But the Germania infantry with the berserkers, the night raiders, and the effective against armor chosen axemen have moved slightly round to the right here. Now, it wouldn't surprise me if all of the enemy teams started to attack my Roman allies here. Bearing in mind my Greek city's army is a bit at the back. But as I said, I, I think I want, when I played this game, I think I wanted to keep my Greek city's army away from uh, the front line there so that, um, as I say, I, I'm not going to be um, kind of, they, they won't know exactly what I'm going to do there. So hopefully, if they attack my ally, I will be able to move over there fast enough to actually help. As I say, it wouldn't surprise me if they attacked all in one group. Right, I can see the Germania infantry, the Seleucid infantry, and the Egyptian infantry all moving in onto Exilius' SBQR infantry. Right, <clears throat> let's just pause the game for a second. If you look at the Germania army, can you see those banners are flashing on and off? Now, what's actually happened there? Uther has now activated those Berserker units. So those Berserker units are now running forward. Uh, with their effective against armor maces and um, those two hit points and those uh, and their massive attack is going to cause a lot of um, problems for my uh, SBQ or ally here as you can see the Egyptian um, pikemen are charging as well the Seleucid pikemen are charging in as well the chariots as well so we've got the scare factor from the chariots from the night raiders and from the berserkers so there's a, a heck of a lot of morale lowering uh, fear factor going into Exilius' infantry there. Now maybe at this stage, can you see the Germania uh, cavalry coming around here as well? Now maybe at this stage, if you notice, I'm running my Greek city's army over, but have I left it too late? Did I keep my Greek city's army too far away from the fray? Let's just see what happens here. Right, you can see that the enemy are really aggressively attacking Exilius's SBQR units there. They, what they're trying to do is rout his army completely. That's what they're hoping to do there, is rout his army completely and then move on to JGP's SBQR army and then just try and uh, isolate my, uh, my Greek cities if they could. But if you notice, I'm running my Greek cities army over as fast as I can now to help Exilius. Right, let's just pause the game for a second. As you can see here, as their infantry attacked, uh, Uther has charged his Germania cavalry in. There's some Seleucid tank cavalry attacking our um, allies' SBQR cavalry there. So uh, what they'd love to do is win the cavalry battle so they could get in behind us with their cavalry. There's chariots coming in behind as well. Now, can you see that Seleucid, those Seleucid pikemen? What he'd like to do is to probably take those units in behind my Greek city's units and attack them from the rear. As you can see, all the uh, Germania uh, infantry are attacking at the front, as well as the um, a lot of the uh, the Egyptian pikemen all moving in. As I say, there's uh, Egyptian chariots in behind us as well. At this stage of the battle, things are not looking very good for our team. I can see a lot of my allies, SBQR, uh, Rome units starting to rout. Now, if you notice, I'm taking my infantry forward. I've got their pikes down. And what I'm going to do is halt them. I think I've halted them there. So as the enemy attacks my forward units, their pikes will be down. Now remember, there's a close-up of the fight in there. Remember, those Spartan units of mine have got two hit points, uh, as well as having very good specifications on top of it. There's a bit of a close-in of the fighting going on there. As you can see, there's still three Berserker units um, activated there. So they'll be killing loads with those um, effective against armor um, maces there. But uh, facing Greek cities with their pikes down is quite a daunting task for Germania, and they will lose a lot of their men. And those berserkers will start dying quickly if they attack my uh, my pikemen. 
Meanwhile, over on the right here, can you see the Seleucid tank cavalry, cataphract tank cavalry, and the Seleucid infantry are trying to push in our right flank here. What they would love to do is to rout my SBQR ally there and get in behind my Greek city's uh, units there. That's what they would really like to do there. And that's why they're being so aggressive on that right flank. If you notice, I can see the Egyptian pikemen coming in on my left flank, so I've turned a Spartan unit to face that way. If you see here, Uther using a lot of his uh, years of experience there, knowing he doesn't want to take the pikemen on with his uh, infantry head on, he's moving his infantry round the flank. Nice little move there by Uther. Those effective against armor axemen are moving round in behind our, uh, our units there. Nice little tactical move there by, uh, the by Uther. You notice I've run one of my Spartan units He's over there to try and the counter that, uh, that move by, uh, by Uther. There's a lot of, um, as I said, Seleucid appointment and cavalry there. <clears throat> okay, so what I've decided to do now is move my uh, Spartans forward in a group. Right, I'm just going to pause the game here to take stock of exactly what's happening. If you notice there, my, um, remember that my allies are the Purple SBQR Rome um, units there. Uh, and the enemy are the Egyptians, the Seleucid and Germania. So if you notice, I'm moving my Greek city's unit in a tight formation forward. Um, at this time of the battle, I don't want to start splitting my army up and moving units here there. I want to keep them in a tight group moving forward, being aggressive with those Greeks, making the most of those um, attacking specifications that those Spartans have got. So I'm going to keep moving forward towards the main threat, which is those Seleucid pikemen. So what I'm going to keep doing is moving towards those in a tight formation with my uh, Spartan units there. I notice that my uh, my allies uh, Rome SBQR units are trying to keep the enemy away from my flanks and rear. There are no support by my uh, SBQR uh, allies there. But as I say, if these Germania infantry and uh, Seleucid forces break through here on the right flank, they could then get in behind behind my uh, Spartans, and that could make a difference in the battle. Right, let's just um, carry on with the uh, with the battle there. And as I said. You can see me move my Spartans forward in a very aggressive attacking uh, formation there. As I say, I don't want to start splitting my army. I don't want to start moving units off to one side or the other. I want to keep them in a tight formation, uh, keeping the forward units moving forward. But if necessary, the rear units are turned to face rear um, if any of the uh, the enemies start to attack. As you can see, there's Germania effective against armor axemen coming in behind my Spartans there. And also there's some uh, Seleucid Cataphranc tank cavalry there as well. But as I say, the main threat to, to our team at the moment is the long pikes of those Seleucid pikemen there. So that's why I'm moving forward in a very aggressive way with my own pikemen there, trying to take out those, um, those Seleucid pikemen. Okay, the, uh, the Cataphranc cavalry are in behind me now. And they're starting to try and kill uh, one of my SBQR allies infantry units that are in behind me as well there. As I said with this Spartan unit there, I'm just I just want to keep a tight, close formation moving forward there. All the time. Being extremely aggressive with my forward units going into those Seleucid appointment, but also turning some of my uh, units to face the threat from these uh, these Germania effective against armor infantry. Right, can you see here? Uther's bringing in three more effective against armor Germania units round to my left flank. Actually, he's got in behind my units there, but my SBQR allies there has got some units in to help counter that attack. Right, see, now those cataphract heavy cavalry there, if they charge in, that could be the tipping point. That could be a pivotal part of the battle because the, the charge bonus that they're putting in into my tired Spartans could spark a mass rout. That's why he's tried this. He's tried a mass route attack there with his cavalry, knowing that my Spartans would be tired. But remember that the Spartans' morale is excellent, so to route the Spartans takes a lot of doing. And if you notice there, a lot of those Seleucid, um, well, I think all those Seleucid cavalry basically have now uh, have now been routed. And remember that the Seleucid morale is not very good, and we've just killed the Seleucid general there, so uh, 
their morale will drop. Do you remember what I said to you about um, Egyptian pharaoh yeah, archers? So well, tough, you can use them as light infantry. See these guys fighting um, an urban unit bit. there? Now they've been fighting that urban unit for some time, my guess is, and yet they're still... They've just been routed now, but they fought down, right down to their last, uh, almost to their last man they're fighting. They're so, um, they're so tough, those Pharaoh archers. And as I said, probably pound for pound, they are the, um, the best archers in the game. And looking at the battle now, it looks like our team has managed to, um, to go on and, uh, and won the, won the battle there. As you can see, it's only a 3v3, but it was very intense Big battle there. I think we've lost most of our cavalry now, so we're trying to chase down the routers with infantry, which always takes um, takes a bit of time there. But uh, my my gamble with bringing Greek cities, as I said, puts my uh, allies at a cavalry disadvantage. But I think uh, they made up for that with the way they dealt with the berserkers and with the Seleucid pikemen there. So um, and with their uh, with the Cretan archers, they did very well as well. So um, yeah, they're okay. The first thing I'd like to say is really well played to everybody in the game. Uh, it was a close victory, but uh, so you can see how um, let's say how close the battle was there. Uh, some really good kills for the enemy team there, um, and really well done for their aggressive attacking manner there. And well done to JGP and Exilius, my two allies, who did extremely well uh, with the way that they fought off those aggressive attacks and supported my um, my attack forward there. As I say, it was a close victory. Just have a look at some of the. Um, statistics of the battle there you can see some of my uh, archers did well they did like kind of mediocre I suppose there nothing fantastic some of the Spartan units had some big kills but remember we were fighting a big 120 man uh, Sally Sid infantry units there so it might look good there but as I say we're up against the big units there so that's why those Spartans got uh, got so many kills there and once again, just say really well played through, but in the game, I like to see the aggressive manner that the enemy attacked in there, um, and really well uh, done to JGP and Exilius there for their teamwork. I hope you enjoyed the battle. Uh, look forward to seeing you soon. This is Spark Commander saying bye for now.